Well, hello everybody, and welcome to episode 104 of the Let's Play World. Today, I wanna to revisit our front door project that we sort of got stuck on last episode. I wanna talk a little bit about the city and show you some work I've done over there, and I wanna catch another mob and add it to our zoo. But first, I heard it was a birthday for one of my viewers, and so I wanted to say happy birthday to Kylie and put a cake on our table here. Kylie also had a recommendation for our wall of tasks. Floating castle atop a beanstalk. A very specific request, but we'll see if we can get to that. We already have a floating island, and maybe we can kind of mix these two together, or maybe the floating island might be a good practice for then building a floating castle. We'll see how that goes. Last episode, we started work on this door project where we would ring the bell and a skulk sensor would open the door for us. But what I discovered is when I walk, the skulk detects that, and until the skulk relaxes, it won't detect another signal. So basically, I would have to walk up to the door, wait a second, then ring the bell. And I was thinking, the wool makes it so that the signal doesn't reach the skulk. And so if we put a carpet down, then the bell is going to work just fine. Now we have a couple of different options here. One option is we could do the red carpet, you know, roll out the red carpet, very regal, very royal. Or we could do this other kind of carpet that's a little bit more modern, kind of a mix of light and dark gray, which I think matches the base really, really well. But I'm gonna leave it up to you. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Should we do red carpet or should we do gray carpet? The other thing I realized is while this bell works, the bell on the other side didn't. And if I put the bell anywhere other than here, it works right there. But if I put it anywhere else, it's too far away. I can show you what I mean. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's eight blocks away right there. And so you can kind of see that that is barely within range of the skulk, especially since this is basically two blocks down. So yeah, eight blocks is actually not very far. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bell here and then I'm going to move the circuit so it's just a little bit closer. And then my walking and all of that won't make any difference because I will be too far away and then this bell will open the door from that side. Turns out Skulk is a little bit more finicky than I had imagined. So I think that's what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna move this circuit so that it's just close enough to the door, and I might also need to move the pulse extender a little bit. Okay, took a little finagling, but I think I found a sweet spot. So if I walk up here and I ring this bell, door's gonna open. I go outside, run around, and then come back. I ring the bell, it opens. Only thing is, on this other side here, if I get up on this top step, right here, yeah, you can see it there. The skulk can kind of detect me here. So as long as I ring the bell 
here. We should be just fine. Okay, door project is done. You guys are going to let me know which carpet color you like. What's next? Well, the next thing I want to do is show you some work I've been doing on the city. We're going to fly over here to our creeper farm. And you may remember that I started kind of sketching out the next buildings I wanted to build. Well, here you can see I've gone ahead and filled them in. And they're starting to look really cool. Some of them a little bit more modern. Got some new colors. Let's hop over there and I'll kind of show you what's going on. You can see right down here we've got a couple of new buildings. Working on the alleys as well to make them look like they're being used and lived in. This building was actually pretty easy to do, but it looks really cool. Very modern. Back over here, this street basically is kind of a little dead end. So it just kind of comes around like this. And I added another subway stop. So once we build our subway, we'll have a couple of different stops. Looking a little different than the other buildings. Again, just to keep it kind of interesting. Some new materials. And then right around here, next to the little motel, it kind of comes up like this. We can see the backside of these buildings. And then this is all kind of open still. And I think today we want to do some building here. You might remember a while ago, I went around and gathered up all of the horses that were nearby. And I think in this space here, I want to build a little bit of a, a ranch or a stable so we can have a place for the horses. I've got a ton of oak, so I think I'm primarily going to use it. And then I'm going to grow some spruce use as an accent. So I think my plan is to build the ranch over here and then on this side I'm going to flatten it out a little bit and then we can build some stables over here. Before we get started, I just wanted to point this out. I had a couple of uh, pillagers come by and I decided to trap them and I name tagged them. So I've got Alfred, got Boris, and I've got Charles here. And what I'm going to do is get these guys to break their crossbows. And then I figured we could use these uh, pillagers in our city build. But one thing at a time.
this is looking really, really awesome. Of course, it starts raining as soon as I want to show it to you. But we've got this nice gate that goes into our ranch. And we have this kind of enclosed area here where the horses can hang out. Got some stables. And this is an interesting mechanic here where, you know, horses are three blocks tall. If you put some slabs upside down and some slabs on the ground, even though the horses can walk in and out, they don't want to. They don't think they can clear this, and so they just stay in these stables. It's kind of a neat thing. The house is looking really nice. I love the windows up top. I love the mix of materials. Don't really have anything going on inside yet. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Definitely need to get the horses in here. Definitely need to do some terraforming because we're a little steep over here still. And then the last thing I want to do is something in this corner. You know, I had imagined I would just take the fence and connect it, but it's a really big space and it looks kind of awkward. And so I think I might do like some sort of landscaping that will kind of mob proof the area and give it kind of a more natural look. So here's what we're going to do in the corner. Made kind of a natural looking rock formation and it's taller on the backside. So if there are mobs, they're not going to be able to climb in here. So it's pretty safe. And we're going to have a pool down here. And then right up here, I want there to be a waterfall. That looks pretty awesome. Very, very cool. The last step is I need to get the horses into the corral here. So let me see if I can do this without all of them taking off on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I lead nine horses at once. Apparently I can. This looks ridiculous. Well, I think we did it. Looks like a horse ranch to me. That looks really great. Very happy with that. You know, to finish out the episode, I thought I wanted to add another mob to the zoo. But I think our time might be better served by adding a portal to the zoo. There's a lot of mobs we need to bring over here, and we don't have a great way of doing it. So if we came up with a nether portal so that we could take them through the nether, that might make more sense. So I'm thinking somewhere back here where we have all this space, this would probably be a fine place to put the portal. Let's light this up and see where it takes us. Well, we're somewhere in the nether. Let's see if we can figure out where we are here. Hello. Oh, I see something that is our tunnel that goes to the Ocean Monument. Yeah, okay. So if we were to like, come out on the other side of that portal, I think it would kind of crash right into this. Go ahead and run back to the base so we can go through our portal and see if we can connect to that one from the other side. Okay. So this way leads to the ocean monument. And so right here, hypothetically, where that other portal should be. And hoglands. Okay. 
Fantastic. That'll make it much easier to get the mobs over here. Between episodes, I'll clean that tunnel up a little bit. Next episode, I have a couple ideas. One of them is add villagers. Plus, if you don't know, I'll show you how to break the crossbows and pacify the pillagers. The other thing I want to do next episode is the street level shops. And I have a couple of ideas for different shops we can add. And finally, we can take horse stable off the wall of tasks. And remember, if you've got ideas for builds, leave me a comment and I'll put it up here on the wall of tasks. Well, I feel like we got a lot done in this episode. I'm very excited to get this carpet finished. Remember to leave me a comment and let me know which colorway you like best. And I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow along on the adventure. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.